Ladies and gentlemen, what is happening? Welcome back to another Scarlet and Violet Wi-Fi battle. Today, I've got another really good match for you here. So I got this match in most of the games that I play through my Discord server. If you ever want to battle or just hang out in the community, go ahead and hit the link in the description to join, and we'd be happy to have you. So let's go ahead and jump into the match. So my opponent is going to go ahead and lead off with floppy arms as I decide to go with the Infernape. I'm thinking I get myself a nice little U-turn action, and this actually works pretty well because most of the time you see Mian Shao, is going to be a Choice Scarf set. It's probably going to go for U-Turn on turn one. So I decide to U-Turn as well, but they actually turn out to be Fake Out, which is actually good to know. Uh, this thing not being Choice Scarf, it is going to be Life Orb there. And that definitely means that Infernape is faster. So I don't really see them staying in here, so I'm going to go ahead and go for a U-Turn. I know they have uh, big walls like the Melotic on their team, and I can grab a better matchup here. So they do actually end up switching out. going to go right into that Melotic like I worried about. And now I have to figure out a plan against this thing. Of course, my Lotic being the bulky bitch that she is, is kind of a problem. But I do have an answer in the form of Matcha T. And Sinistra is going to come out here basically trying to set up. Now, my one fear against the Milotic is that it could potentially get rid of me and kind of ruin my setup with the Dragon Tail. So I'm going to go into Sinistra in hopes that this thing isn't carrying that. And I could potentially get this thing to start to set up and honestly be amazing. Sinistra is such a good Pokemon right now, and if they don't have the right answers for it, you're going to have a bad time. So, we actually see that this thing is going to get burnt by its Flame Orb, meaning it is going to activate its Marvel Scale, uh, boosting its defense one and a half times, and a very scary defensive wall. But I go right for the Calm Mind, thinking I can set up some special attack here, and it turns out they do have the Dragon Tail, however, it actually does miss, because I'm a small teapot and you can't see my ass. So, if he wants to go for the Dragon Tail again to get me out of here, he's going to have to take a Macha Gacha first, and uh, I'm thinking I'm actually probably pretty close in range to kill here. So I go for that Macha Gacha, spread my green goo <laughs> all over the place, and it actually ends up living it in the red. But goes for a Dragon Tail again, and also misses again, which is honestly kind of crazy. This Milotic out here can't see shit. You gotta get your eyesight checked out, my dude, for real. Uh, but the good news is, Milotic is basically taken care of at this point. I can finish it off with whatever, and it's a huge threat out of the way. So it's actually gonna end up going for the Ice Beam without the negative priority of the Dragon Tail it is able to attack here first. Uh, so I take it pretty nicely with the Calm Mind, but then I miss my own Macha Gacha. So I'm thinking, why didn't I click Shadow Ball? There was no reason for me to not Shadow Ball. Uh, I thought I could, I, apparently you can't see shit on this battlefield in general. So we're just missing attacks left and right and uh, definitely a misplay. However, if they did switch, Macha Gacha is always the better play uh, to try to, to grab a burn anyway. Plus I thought he was gonna go down to the burn damage, which he actually does not. Lives it with like two HP and at this point, Knowing that he's going to go down to that burn, I can just basically Calm Mind for free here. After taking another Ice Beam, unfortunately, I am below half, which is not ideal because the longevity of the Sinistra kind of requires more HP. But I do get another Calm Mind, and that's actually pretty clutch because this is a Sinistra that is max defense and HP. And then with two Calm Minds, this thing is looking pretty damn defensive for a little shattered bowl of fucking Play-Doh over here. So, Milotic does go down to its own burn, which is great, and I'm glad I did not have to deal with that Marvel scale Milotic too badly, because that big Bertha bitch is probably so annoying to handle with a physical attacker. So, now they get a free switch into whatever they like, and it turns out to be Yan Mega, and I'm thinking, with the two Calm Minds, I should be able to take an attack here and fire off a Shadow Ball, which uh, I don't really have any other option. So he does stay in, goes for that Bug Buzz, I leave it with 5 HP because Sinistra is amazing, firing off a Shadow Ball in return, and that is going to be a dead Yan Mega. So that's another one of the biggest offensive threats they have out of the way, and Sinistra is out here taking names. Sadly, without enough HP, I can't really keep it going here. Uh, that's why this thing does have the Strength Tap. You're able to actually get a ton of HP back and drop Physical Attack. And honestly, one of the more annoying Pokemon to deal with is this Sinistra set. But uh, they now have an empty battlefield, they decide to go back in the Mian Shao, Young Floppy comes back in, and I don't really have anything that wants to switch into this, plus, you know, Sinistra at this low of HP isn't really worth it. So, they go for a U-turn here that does finish me off, but what that also does is, allows me to see what they want to U-turn into, and then I can bring in a matchup here. So, that's pretty solid, I am still very afraid of this Mian Shao, honestly it outspeeds a lot. And overall, it can kind of take a hit if it's at full and just generally scary in the back. So, they decide to bring in the Tinkaton on the empty battlefield. Now, this is a Pokemon that I have kind of a weird matchup against. Like, I have Garchomp with the Earthquake who could potentially get some big damage but likely not kill. Uh, but then I just worry about taking it play rough. So what I decide to do in the long run is I'm going to go into the Slow King. Now, I know that likely this Tinkaton could be some type of setup with like Stealth Rock, could be dual screens. Uh, regardless, I would like to get up a Future Sight because it's actually really good against their team. 
Um, if they decide to switch, something has to take it. But they just go for that Stealth Rock there, which I do expect. So they set up a little little mid-game hazards. And uh, Slowking has a decent matchup here in that I can basically just go for Scalds, try to grab some burns. Uh, the worst that this thing can do is basically just knock off at this point. So it's actually going to end up going for the Encore on my future site. So Paul's bitch ass can see the future, but you can't see it twice. Those are the rules. So that is unfortunate. And as long as the Tinkaton stays in on the future site, uh, it's not going to do too much to this thing. So at this point, I basically have to make a play. And I'm thinking, okay, this thing likely goes for uh, a knockoff or they switch out. More likely they go for a knockoff and I can kind of get in Garchomp relatively for free here. So... Uh, that is what I'm going to do. I'm going to bring in Bruce, and I figure if this thing is max defense, we're going to have a bad time, but I don't have, you know, that many options. So he goes for this knockoff. Now what that does is it knocks off my Rocky Helmet, but you also have to touch me in the process. So he takes some rough skin and some Rocky Helmet, and with that little bit of a uh, little bit of chip, I'm thinking, you know, I'm actually in pretty good spot here, especially with that future site uh, that an Earthquake can handle this thing. So losing my helmet does suck because you know safety first plus anything that touches this guard tomp just takes so much damage because we out here we out here rough as hell uh, so i'm just gonna go for that earthquake they don't have much that wants to switch into this thing and that is gonna end up taking care of the tinkaton so luckily this thing didn't set up any screens and uh, all it was able to do is kind of just set up the stealth rock so i'm totally fine with that down it goes and now he's got three pokemon left so they decide to bring in the Mamoswine. Now this thing is also a bit of a problem. I do not have any Stealth Rock up, so it doesn't take any recoil there. And basically, I want to save Garchomp for later. I'm going to end up switching out into the Slow King, thinking maybe they end up going for an Ice Shard here. Regardless, Slow King has a decent matchup where I can force this thing out uh, with some Scalds, and I know that I can you know, take attacks. So, uh, Paul comes out here, his arms behind his back, looking like an absolute gangster, and they end up going for the Icicle Spear, which tells me... This thing is definitely loaded dice item, and that's going to hit at least four times. So we see that I'm able to take that relatively nicely. And you know, that's a stab, Icicle Shard with four hits. And after Leftover Recovery, okay, I'm thinking it's probably going to be Rock Blast with a potential stab Earthquake in the back pocket. Overall, this Mammoth is pretty scary. But I'm thinking I can likely take an attack here and get off of Huge Scald. So that's exactly what I do. They end up going for the Rock Blast and straight up missing again. I don't know what type of... Fog is all over the battlefield right now, but it's actually kind of insane with the miss RNG. So I go for that Scald. Unfortunately, do not get the burn, but I'm able to knock that thing down to where uh, it's going to be easy to chip later. And uh, I got the amount of damage I needed on this thing. So now I'm going to go for the future side as they Rock Blast. So with the loaded dice, I'm actually going to be able to take one of these, which is amazing. And the reason why I want to get up the future site is because the two Pokemon they have left is going to take a lot of damage from it. Me and Shao takes a lot, and the Coma O does not like the future sites. So I'm really just hoping at this point I can get this Mamoswine out of the battle and one of those fighting types in to the point where they take the future side attack. So the Rock Blast doesn't do as much as they had hoped without that stab. Uh, and at this point, I am going to end up switching out the Slow King because with that Regenerator, I'm actually going to be uh, in a spot where Slow King can actually be usable. So I get myself some health back on switching out. And I decide to go into the Yan Mega, thinking maybe there's an Earthquake happening here. And overall, I just go into this thing kind of for a sack, because looking at the remainder of their Pokemon, it's not going to be super helpful. So they do end up going for the Earthquake, so I come in for free. Uh, and now I basically just kind of force this thing to show me if it has Ice Shard or not. If it does not have the Ice Shard, I easily just outspeed and take care of it. If it does have Ice Shard, I just go down, which in my mind is fine at this point. I'm trying to sack off the Yan Mega anyway. Uh, but may not have been the, the best play in the long run. So they do have that Ice Shard, does take care of me. Uh, but I figured, you know, Yan Mega at half health wasn't going to be able to take an attack from either Mian Shao or the, the Koma O. Now, unfortunately, the future side attack does go off on the Mamoswine. But, I mean, it able is able to take care of that thing. And now they've got two Pokemon left in the form of Koma O and uh, the Mian Shao. So I'm going to bring back in the Slow King. I'm looking nice and healthy with my new regenerated health. And they go into the Mian Shao. So the best thing that this thing can do is essentially just knock off. And I'm feeling like it could potentially be a roll here. Uh, but regardless, I can't really switch anything else in. So I'm going to go for that future site. But I'm realizing after fake out damage, it's likely going to be able to knock me out uh, with a knockoff. Which kind of sucks balls. I probably should conserve the Slow King at this point. But... I'm feeling like I have a chance to beat the Koma O in the back with the Pokemon I have left. Infernape can outspeed, Crawdont can get in a priority attack off, and I just decide to roll for that future site, but knockoff is definitely enough to take care of me. And down goes the Slow King, who is kind of my win condition at this point going against the two fighting types. If I was able to get a future site up, 
I'd be in a great spot, but it is not happening and that is fine. So what I decide to do now is I go into Garchomp. I'm thinking the highest possible damage output that this thing can put on me is going to be high jump kick. And I'm thinking I'm bulky enough to where I could potentially be able to take one, but after Stealth Rock, it looks super close. So I decide to go for an earthquake. It will finish this thing off if possible, but they go for that high jump kick and it does take care of the Garchomp. So that in hindsight is a definite misplay because I wanted to keep the Garchomp around knowing that I can outspeed Kama O and hit it really hard with the Dragon Claw. Uh, so that does not end up working out for me. Garchomp goes down. And now I've got two Pokemon left thinking maybe I actually still have a shot here. So definitely misplay on my end, but hey, you know, it happens. I'm going to go into Mr. Craw. And in Aqua Jet with the adaptability plus a Terra Water should be able to knock this thing out uh, a little bit above half. And that's kind of all I really have to go for here. So I'm going to go for that Terra Water here. Crawdont with that priority is... Honestly, such a massive monster, especially late game. Uh, so I decide, you know, I've got to use all my resources at this point. They do have that coma O left, but we've got, you know, a lobster in a dream, baby. I put a little waterfall on my fucking head and an aqua jet is going to be able to take care of Mian Shao, but not before it was able to just do so much damage to my team. Uh, so massive threat out of the way. And now we have to see what kind of coma O we are going to be dealing with. Keep in mind, I do have my fastest Mon with that Infernape in the back. And I have priority with the Crawdon. Unfortunately, Como O's Dragon type ass does resist the Aqua Jet. And it's coming down to a point where can Infernape have enough damage to finish this thing off? So in comes Como O looking badass. And I'm thinking, okay, Aqua Jet looks like it's only going to do honestly about 20%, which is not going to be enough. So what I need to do to be able to win this game is make a play and get enough damage potentially with like a liquidation and then an Aqua Jet to bring in Infernape and see what I can make happen. Honestly, it's not looking great, but this end game is honestly super close. So what I decide to do in the long run is just go for that liquidation. It's honestly my best play. Really, realistically, an Aqua Jet doesn't do enough for me uh, to allow Infernape to win the match. So they do, of course, end up going first, goes for that boom burst and knocks me out with a critical hit, which was actually super close. I believe that does like 70 to 80%. So likely gonna kill Kraw regardless, but uh, it was more worth it for me to try to click that liquidation. So unfortunately now this thing grabs a little throat spray and this thing is ready to go on a date with my Infernape. But I'm hoping the date goes a different way. So all I have basically is a close combat and a dream and I'm really thinking I'm not going to be able to get enough damage here. Or, or are we? So <laughs> Infernape comes in staring this beast in the face and uh, I do have to basically just click that close combat. It's kind of my best option here. And I go for it, and unfortunately this thing's armor allows it to live. It done, not, not even able to do half. Uh, so you can see where the Aqua Jet plus the close combat doesn't actually end up winning me the game. So he is going to end up finishing me off with the clanging scales. But regardless, it was a super good game. I definitely made some misplays. Uh, keeping my win conditions around, like the Slow King getting off the, the future site would have been amazing. Misplaying with the Garchomp was definitely bad. But, you know, that's the way it goes. Sometimes you win and sometimes you lose, regardless, super fun game. Uh, let me know if you guys enjoyed, leave a comment. I always appreciate all the support on these videos and thank you guys very much. See you next time.